A balance of emotions is important to a well-rounded personality. But emotions out of control, well, let's take a look at a slice of everyday life to understand how some stimuli can bring about various emotional responses. Hello? Why, hi. Hi, Josh. Oh, my God. I didn't know it would be you. I was very surprised. That's very strange because my name comes up. Oh, never mind. Oh, why can't you do a bit? Even if you don't like the bit, there's always room for improvement. I was improv. I I was doing a yes. Why? Yes. Who? Yes. Please stop. Yes. And I would prefer not to ever see you again, even socially. That's the Chicago way. Exactly. They didn't mess around in Chicago. What did I just hear about Chicago? Something that just happened in Chicago. I went, oh, oh, okay, yeah. I found out my friend who's become a right, he's a, I don't even want to talk about it. He's a right winger and I'll just get it, uh, aggravated. But I, but he, I found out he was in a band called Green and it was an excellent band and this other band called the Lilacs. Yeah. And they were, he was like a, like a, like a very popular indie bass player. Yeah. And, uh, his name is, uh, is Ken Kirsten. Now he owns the, uh, now he's like what writes with Giuliani. I don't know. I don't understand what happened. I don't understand what happened, but I just, you don't expect someone who went right wing to all of a sudden to find out in his past. Oh, and he was a popular independent bass player. All right. It doesn't, I don't, I don't understand the, uh, getting older and getting more conservative or at any age. No, but it does seem to be the curve. Although my father went the other way. Uh, he went more my, liberal? My father got more more lefty as he aged. So did, and you know who, who did that? Was uh, uh, Gruber's dad. Yeah. Norm. I love Norm. Norm got disgusted in the early 2000s with, uh, he got disgusted from uh, George W. Bush. Yeah. I think he was already not loving it with the first Bush. But yeah. who could like uh, Clinton? Not Clinton. His name Clinton? It was a depressing time period. Is this name Clinton, did you just say? Was it? Yes. Yes, it was. Okay, good. Assuming, what, you're, what, talk, assuming you're talking about the president. Yes, I am. Because I could, I can mix up Carter with Clinton very easily. Yeah, they were, both were presidents. So. Yeah, so you can see, imagine my surprise, right? I mean, but had you, How, said, had you said, was it Carter? I would have said, yeah. <laughs> oh, exactly. Was it Carter? Was it Clinton? Was it Dukakis? It was not. Du- I don't think Dukakis was the answer. You kept you kept pushing them on me, sending me brochures. We had some terrible candidates. I just remember today. Well, I'm saying me. I consider myself a, a member of the Democratic Party, but I, I still can't believe that I voted for John Edwards once in my life. I had to vote for that idiot. Did you really? Well, for John Kerry and, and oh John yeah, Bush. that's right. As a vice president, that's not really voting for them, though. Come on. It's not. Hey, it's not. I didn't vote for Lieberman either. You know what I mean? Exactly. Lieberman was the worst. Nah, that wasn't the worst. Now with all these other horrible things. So I'm getting more. Uh, I'm getting more uh, optimistic, and also getting more. Uh, uh, like I can see myself explode. Not exploding, but I have to get away. You know what I mean? Get away from. You know, I'm going to start watching more, and it can't go well. Yeah. How about you? How are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling fairly optimistic, I would say, about the election. Uh, I did watch too much news today, but there wasn't that much to it today. I just happened, I just didn't do other stuff that much. Right. Yeah. I, it's going to be fucking crazy. The next month is going to be crazy. And if he loses, the two months between losing and uh, inauguration are going to be fucking crazy, too. So you're going to be, I'm going to be on pins and needles or whatever you call it when you're afraid that you're going to be in serious trouble. Hey, thanks for sending me the uh, information about the Ari Melbourne thing. That was unexpected, very surprising See, and fun. That was the payoff to me watching news all day. And who expects me? I mean, I'll never expect me, but who expects right at the top of the show? Hey, let's show Andy Kindler. Yeah. Right now. It's not, it's not a choice I could, I would go with. You wouldn't put me in the fir- in the what do you call the fir- the A block? You wouldn't put me in the A block? No. Why do I feel like Aaron? I did a whole block blue? before I called you. <laughs> Doesn't Aaron Sorkin like to say, 
Put it in the A block. I just, put it in the and then, I just watched his movie last night. What is his movie? Uh, the Trial of the Chicago Seven on Netflix. Oh, that looked like it was. I said to myself, "That's not the Chicago Seven from back in the 1968 Democratic National Convention, is it?" Why, yes, it is. <laughs> How many fucking movies they've done? About, I think 35 movies about it. It's already been done. Yeah, I'm not interested in Aaron Sorkin's take on Abby Hoffman, and uh, but I bet it was the best thing you've seen all year. No, it was not. It wasn't very good. Uh, it wasn't very good. I don't think it was very good, no. What were the problems with it? Now, don't forget, didn't he also do the morning show thing with Apple TV? Or isn't he also? No, that wasn't him. Oh, okay. That just feels like it was him. <laughs> well, I'm still, we still get a, a Studio 60 on LaserDisc, so we're fans <laughs> going way back. Yeah. Uh, it was, you know, it was, there was some good performances, but it was just so unevenly written and like it had this, this bizarre phenomenon of sort of assuming, you know, nothing and assuming, you know, too much <laughs> simultaneously sometimes. It's not a documentary, right? No, it, it's no, a regular it's a, thing. No, it's a Sorkin, Sorkin drama. Who played Paul Krasner? Uh, Paul Krasner was not involved. Oh, I thought he was, he always tells that story about taking acid during the trial. He, he wasn't one of the Chicago Seven. He was I, not. I, I'm but, now thinking. <laughs> but, but he might well have been at the trial. He was at the trial. Okay, the Chicago Seven was Squeaky From, right? right? Yeah. Uh, Leslie Van Houten, right? right? Julius and Ethel Rosenberg. <laughs> the Lindbergh Baby. The Lindbergh not Baby. Not Lindbergh. Abby Hoffman and Dustin <laughs> Hoffman. And Dustin Hoffman and Bruce Stern, who was in a movie about Vietnam. Yeah. So who was odd. Yeah. It was just odd. <laughs> it was Sasha. It's Sasha Baron Cohen as Abby Hoffman. Get out of here. Does he do a prank? <laughs> um, he, well, he does a merry prank. But he is he's a good actor. I liked him when he was uh, played Formula Un in that movie, which I don't remember one thing from that movie. Yeah. The Talladega Nights. But he seems like a good actor. He's a, he's a good actor. It felt it felt uh, it felt like Sasha Baron Cohen doing Eric Bogosian doing Abby Hoffman. <laughs> I can see that. That is a very good. <laughs> that's a character I can get behind. All right. And the night before, why'd you cu why'd you cut me off so fast? No, I didn't mean. I no, I didn't mean to. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm feel better now. <laughs> I'm sorry. What did you say about the other night? And then the night before that, I said. I watched uh, the uh, Spike Lee-directed filming of the David Byrne show. <gasps> How was that? It was really uh, irritating to me. <laughs> it was really, really, well, you know, it was really irritating to me. Can I guess one thing? Sure. Let me just guess one thing, then I'll give you the floor. Okay. There's no way that you know that Spike Lee is involved in it, right? I mean, he hasn't, he hasn't put himself in it in any way, shape, or form. He does not, although... He, you know, he lets you know someone's directing a lot of the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So what was annoying? So annoying. What was so annoying to me about it was his his need to assert his directorial presence with the camera and really um, disrespect this amazing choreography um, oh man! You know he's real. He's camera. He's got like nineteen cameras, and he's using fucking all of them. And he's got Busby Busby Berkeley overhead shots, and he's shooting dance <laughs> stuff way too close, and you lose complete geography of the stage. Oh, I and hate it's that. like I hate you that. know <laughs> this thing was so designed to be seen from the front. That makes sense. You yes. know, it, it was completely designed for that. You know, it's even in this sort of box. You know, <laughs> and. <laughs> And, you know, you just lose that sense of it. And what was so magical about seeing it live was this sort of, you know, this band moving around the stage like a single organism, which was so cool. And you just kind of, you just, you only get sort of fleeting glimpses of that. Yeah. Yeah. So you lose what was dramatic about it and interesting. And then he he has you, oh, I'm behind the scenes of something that doesn't look yeah, Good from behind the scenes. Yeah, exactly. There's so many <laughs> shots from angles that wouldn't that no one in the audience would be seeing it from. Yeah, you know, and that to me, you know, 
and it wasn't like a few. It was, you know, just as many as from the front, probably, you know. It's so frustrating. It was really frustrating because it was this thing that I wanted people to see and experience just some portion of the way I did, you know. But I can't even see. I just don't it's see. Still, the it's still, you know, it's worth seeing because it's still, mm-hmm. co- it's still a cool show, and the music's great still, you know. But yeah, you know, but having seen it live, it was a real. It was distressing to me the way that Spike Lee saw it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not, you know, just on that basis alone, I will not see it. Although I did see a very good documentary by Nick Broomfield, who I guess I should know him. Yeah. Uh, uh, called Ma- uh, Leonard and Marianne, I think it was called. Yeah. About unbelievable. That Leonard Cohen did a lot of acid, and uh, the whole thing was great. I just lied. And Nick Broomfield was great. Do you know? Do you know his stuff? I do, and he 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 can irritate the shit out of me. Let me finish. Let me finish. <laughs> really, Let me finish. This really was exactly makes the his kind of a thing. little too much about him for me, but. Yeah, it was all about him, which I enjoy because I don't know the other people. <laughs> no, I do know the other people. But Leonard Cohen, oh my God, if I could hang out with him, I would now. I know I'd blow it though too. I'd be around him going because I'd want to do. That's why I said you'd him. much rather be trapped in an elevator with Leonard Cohen than Bob Dylan. Well, not mean Bob Dylan. If I'm going to see <laughs> Bob Dylan, he's going to be like eh, Andy Kindler. I'm a big fan. I'd like to hear some of your music. I can't even do them now. I used to be able to do them. That, a wouldn't that bit. be the worst case scenario? If he was like overly nice? If he said, I want to hear some of your music? Oh, that would be the worst. Yes, of course. <laughs> that would be the worst. He'd leave. First of all, he'd leave. He would leave before. It would be worse than Donovan felt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Donovan probably he took it off. Well, Donovan, he still played a nice song, and everyone seemed to enjoy it. Right. There, was cla- there was clapping, and no, no, I don't want to be on Bob on the wrong side of Bob Dylan's mood. <laughs> well, it's a li- that ship has sailed. Uh, no, your impression of Bob Dylan is not going to prevent me from finally having a meeting with Bob Dylan, where we maybe we jam, maybe we don't. I don't play my songs. Yeah, <laughs> we merely jam. Yeah. So I won't recommend that for you then. Don't watch that one. Yeah. But you should you should watch the David Byrne thing, but just to know what it is. Well, what am I from a different country and I've just moved here and you're familiar arising me with the culture? I know I know many things. I don't know why I said that. I, don't I regret it. It was really off putting. Really off I regret my apologies. Okay. I'm so All sorry. Right. Okay, we're back to one. <laughs> Why? What's wrong with constantly saying I'm sorry with a phony voice? I'll certainly try to be better as the podcast progresses. I've got to see my role in it. <laughs> <laughs> Stop mocking me with the, your stupid laugh. Stop mocking me with stupidest we are literally the stupidest two people talking into a microphone right now could, there's nobody in the be. universe yeah. using microphones for less of a reason <laughs> than us going <laughs> you're a <little> stupid face <laughs> yeah, well that's only because comedy clubs are closed right now that's true otherwise we would be, we would be avoiding going to comedy clubs right. <laughs> oh god i got to tell you josh oh my god yeah i saw the next This comedy store documentary goes downhill. Not that it was ever uphill, (laughs) but it immediately you have a story of Howie Mandel is telling you about a Richard Pryor experience that you don't believe is true. The way he's saying it, (laughs) he and then Pryor comes in. He goes, "I am God." And then when the guy from the from the crowd goes, "You're not God, are you?" "Yes, I am, sir." I mean, he just goes on and on. And Mike Binder, you keep thinking he's like a. A guy who, who's not familiar with comedy right. or something. Oh, it's really bad. It really gets. They don't have very little, even no, not that much Letterman in the second. Uh, uh, I I couldn't even finish the second episode of it. Second episode was the strike one, right? Yes. Well, how many I, have you watched? I, I'm, I'm like, I've watched about fifteen percent of the first one. <laughs> And it's so much like, this isn't even a, 
a documentary about the, the comedy no, store. It's this an could infomercial. Be anything. It's an infomercial for the comedy store. <laughs> and then Tim Allen says, uh, and then I first went to, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> and then someone from the, you know, it was like, men loved it. Uh, uh, oh, oh. It can't be. This can't be the real thing. This must be a, <laughs> Tom a dummy Tom thing. Tom Herrera goes, that's over there is where I got my first five development deals. <laughs> Do you think this is a false flag, maybe? <laughs> you know what a false flag is, right? I do. Okay, because I, for a second I was like, you can't not know that. Because you you, uh, you you told me you loved Alex Jones until he went commercial, until he went commercial. <laughs> I was ca- cast, not castigated, but I made my usual bad joke. Hey, the Jets are tied. I said the Jets are zero to zero. And then my friend who knows about football said, Andy. You're supposed to be rooting for them to lose. I've never been good at that. But I guess it, it, I have to now segue into we need to lose the rest of our games. Why? To draft? I guess so. <laughs> That's what he's saying. It's four games into the season. Yeah, it does seem soon to me. No, I mean, you shouldn't be rooting for them because that's stupid. But I mean, rooting for, what? Them, to, rooting for them to lose. Is... I root for my team. You know, I'm not like you. I'm able to get up. And say, you know what? It's not about winning. It's not about having good management. It's not about the guy who's part of the team taking a job with Trump. It's not what it's about. It's about rooting for the same stupid team because they happen to be at one point in the borough that you were in. Right. And now they're in New Jersey. Fuck it, I say. I may even like the Giants better soon. Yeah. Well, the Giants at least have more chances, and I like them. But I don't dislike why not, them. Why not one of the, if, you, if you don't give a shit, why not pick an L.A. team? That's not the way rooting works. I always, Here's the thing. Yeah, it's it like, you know, but, well, that you, be, you no, without be, <laughs> Look, if this was the first year of the podcast, I would have already been crying by now during this uh, argument. But yeah. here's the thing. Uh, for the rest of my life, when I see that those green uniforms or I – Whatever, I'm still going to have a small child's reaction to the Jets. That's I'll fine. Always but you were, you were just them. willing to trade them in for the fucking Giants a second ago, which, well, re- which my renders them said, meaningless. Well, no, no. I mean, well, here's what I do, which I think is a very, very, he- very healthy thing. Yeah. Is I do get involved with teams I like every year. Like, I like the Seahawks because I like Pete Carroll. He used to be in the Jets. and he went there. So I root for teams that I like. I always root against the Patriots, and now he gets to root against uh, Tampa Bay, too. Uh-huh. Because uh, your hero is on and the And then the 49ers, because they got a cool number on their head. <laughs> what do they have in their head, young child? They've got a cool number on their head. What's their number? That's 49! <laughs> And so is that the team? Is So what are you pitching today on preschool's truck tank? you have your own team? I'm just saying that everybody should have a team to root for and for a healthy reason. <laughs> you know, when that kid talks, it makes me think, it makes me stop. It makes me drop my, uh, my, 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 uh, outer exterior and it, and you melt, it melts me. The small child melts me. Thank you, mister. Can you take me home now? Don't do that kind of joke. All right. I didn't mean. I, I didn't mean. You. I didn't mean your home. You yes. stranger danger. <laughs> Don't implicate me even in a sketch about going to the wrong home. <laughs> no, no, ba- no. This is a preschool shark tank. <laughs> On a very special after-school special of. Maybe we should get draconingly, draconianly serious during some shows. Yeah. About what? I don't know. My dead sister, my dead mother, my dead father, something. Where what I is just this, Chinatown? <laughs> my dead mother, my dead sister, my mother, my dead sister, dead mother. Andy, Andy, look, I, I don't know if you're doing a bit about Chinatown, but <laughs> you shorten it up a little bit. You keep saying dead sister, dead mother. You know what? This is the thing that people who, I don't know if uh, uh, those of you out there who, who aren't going through grief right now, oh. I really hope that you listen to nothing I've said during my grief because it's not, it wasn't helpful. It didn't move the ball or it didn't make you learn things. It wasn't a way of you uh, harmonizing tragedy in your life. All I used it was for cheap jokes like this one. Is my mother still alive? 
that kind of crap. Right. I'm I'm embarrassed, and I'm glad my most of my family members are no longer here to see me. <laughs> see, you mourn them poorly. Oh, God, I wish I had access to at least If only some my of... mother were here to see me mourn her. Well, the one thing I keep thinking, I do, I, think, I, think, I do think about my sister's drugs and how come I couldn't get them. Yeah. That's, not, I don't that's think not a healthy thing to OCD out on. No, no, no. It's, I want to get angry at Carl and uh, go rifling through the drawers when I come over to his house, see what he has, see what she left. If I could find some Darbarns from the 60s. Yeah. Leonard Cohen liked these things called mandrakes, which I don't even remember what they were. They were like quaaludes. Yeah. Yeah, you heard me. I've never you had can't... one, but I've heard of them. It... Oh, you have? Yes. Oh, my God. I, I couldn't have done the kind of a schedule he did where he's at like a 20,000 or seat arena and he takes acid. That's not my... That's not... You, you, I, maybe if I tried it once... You couldn't, I'm sorry, you, I didn't quite understand what. No, don't even try, because you know why? It was an example of me segueing into a topic that was not the worst segue, but if, it certainly wouldn't be something I would, I wouldn't, I, I would, first of all, I should have said apropos of nothing. All right. And then I shouldn't have said it. <laughs> <laughs> then it would be you know apropos of, of nothing. That's true. Then it would be That's actually, what, that was it would actually be nothing. Have you written a memoir? Are you going to write a memoir? Um, I don't know. Or something. Not a memoir. Are you going to write a book on your own? Before I, I shuffle off the mortal coil, I probably will have written a book. That's good. That's good. You want to write mine? Beep, 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 boom. No one's offering me one. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. I think I've entered a horrible phase. And the thing that's terrible is the first 20 minutes were fine. Yeah, yeah. I'm starting to sweat from how horrible I am from the inside out. I'm sweating poorly. Yeah. Because how am I going to defend the last five minutes? How am I going to defend them? What's well, my, what am I going to say? And, and is this like a St. Peter sort of defense? Or is this a... <laughs> I, I have to tell you something. It's not... But I do think that's an excellent premise for jokes <laughs> because you have the gate and then. But you know what? Do people ever do the joke from the point of view of St. Peter doing something crazy? And then St. Peter says, I can't decide this right now. I have I have to go. Oh, God, <laughs> I don't feel good. I don't feel good. I feel like I could be dying right now. Yeah. I'm having a panic attack. Right. Please be nice to me. All right. Please be nice to me. What, what, Don't what, hang up on me. I was about to ask, what would, the, what would hanging up do to your panic attack? Don't hang up on me. <laughs> Don't you quit on me. Don't you quit on me, Josh. I got nowhere else to go. <laughs> the lieutenant, lieutenant Colum, lieutenant's woman, the French lieutenant's woman. I'll never see that movie. I'll never see the one where they're in the park in, uh, in, uh, in uh, London, Gotham, uh, Hyde, Hyde Park. Gosford that Park? handsome guy. Gosford, Gosford Park. Park, maybe. But there's also Hyde Hill. Hyde, Hyde in town. With the, the, the good-looking guy who's always in movies. And he... Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. So... Tell, tell me when I can hang up, will you? Not yet. <laughs> okay. Not yet. I'll tell you why. I'm going to try... Here. Look. look. Okay. I want you to say one, one more... I want you to try one more thing, all right? All right. Okay. You know how you said... Uh, you called me and then you said... Look, asshole, just say hello like we didn't uh, have a conversation. I want you to give me one more chance from, like, really be open to how I'm going to be in the next couple of minutes. All right. Okay. So um, did you do anything fun this weekend? Uh, I watched those two movies. Oh, you already said that. I uh, <laughs> Today I got a new pool heater. <gasps> oh, yeah. And then took a I jacuzzi. Didn't... To con consummate it. That must be, you know, I've never been jealous of you having a pool, but I'm, I bet Susan is. I don't, I can't imagine me going in, but it must be the great, it's a great thing to have, right? It ain't bad. Yeah. I've sunk, a, uh, and, I've sunk a fair chunk of change over the last few weeks into it, so I'm very glad it's working now. If you had to give a yearly amount of how much it costs to upgrade a pool, or to, to keep a pool working, is it a crazy amount of money or is it? Not too bad. It's not too bad. 
assuming nothing horrible yeah. goes wrong. Right. I mean, I was uh, I was I was replacing a bunch of you know quarter century year old equipment. So yes, yeah. But the structure of a pool does that last pretty much? Uh there's some cracks. I've got a crack right now, but it's not doesn't appear to be uh, leaking much water, if any. And the other thing I wanted to ask you is, how good did you like the bagels? Bagels were very good. I am so uh, happy with them, and it made me love. Oh, I did not love my sister more, but I used to be like sometimes my sister and I would get into this thing where I, where I would decide those bagels aren't the best, and then I would get very like uh, uh, elitist about it, and then I would close myself off to seeing yeah. how Utopia bagels, which in my lifetime was absolutely my favorite bagels. I think it's safe to uh, say that people from New York are assholes about bagels. <laughs> I know, I know. It brings out the worst in you. It really right? does. Not just you. No, I know everybody. <laughs> Everyone yeah. in New York. Hey, I'm from Brooklyn. You um, don't know why you can't have an egg cream. You haven't had an egg cream. All right, asshole. No, I had an egg cream. I'm from the Bronx. A lot. No, yeah, right, right, right. Yap, 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 these yap, were, yap. These were, it's, in fact, the thickest bagels I've ever had. That is why I didn't in, uh, and the other thing that about them is that the, uh, the onions seemed bigger. The onions themselves or the onion bagels? <laughs> <laughs> no, the bagels. Ah. The onion bagels seemed fatter. They were they didn't seem thicker, but they seemed like a slight like a slightly larger circumference. Yes, but unbelievable. I love them so much. I every day I've looked for I've made first of all, three days in a row, Chemex. Chemex brew. Yeah. And I just took my time. I kept thinking about how you took a half hour to uh, make a sandwich once and you made a meal out of it. Well, it was a meal anyway, but you, I relax, don't hurry. That's my whole thing. Am I going to enjoy the coffee or am I going to just slap it together? So I've every day I've had that bagel. I've convinced myself it's been nirvana. Yeah, oh, good. You know what that is, Andy? What's that? That's mindfulness. Exactly. Exactly. That, I know you're being, you're not even being flippant. No, five yeah, times I'm being flippant, but not sarcastic. <laughs> not sarcastic. That's right. Yeah. Five times in the last thirty seconds, I've thought about hanging up and how great it would be. Yeah. Because I've because I took the conversation back. I took ownership of the conversation. Yeah. And then if I had. There's a change that's come over America. A change that's great to see. We're living here in peace again. We're going back to work again. It's better than it used to be. I'm feeling good about America. And Today, America enjoys the most precious gift of all. We are at peace. We're at peace with the world and at peace with ourselves. America is smiling again. And a great many people believe that the leadership of this steady, dependable man can keep America happy and secure. We know we can depend on him to work to keep us strong at home. We know we can depend on him to work to ease tensions among the other nations of the world. We know we can depend on him to make peace his highest priority. Peace with freedom. Is there anything more important than that? Ring, ring. <laughs> don't give me the... I don't want the ring, ring. Just give me, like, let me do it from... Just count me down. Three, two, ring, ring. <laughs> hey! Uh, uh, hello? <laughs> uh, do you want oh. another take? Yeah, let's do it again. All right. time. Ring, count ring. Count me down. Count me down. And magic in five, four, three, two... Oh, I thought Magic Johnson was going to do it this time. Hello? That's my dumb guy. That's my dumb guy. He's 100% funny. No, let's do it again. Ready? Hello? Hi. Hey, how are you, man? It's really, it feels like I just talked to you a second ago because I break the fourth wall. Why is it that I'm you can't so... do anything easy? Okay. You know what? This time I'm going to do it for real. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> Just do stop talking, though. <laughs> Hello? You made a sound. You made a sound. What do you, don't eat. Are you eating potato chips? I don't like how this is going at all already. And we okay, haven't three, even started. Don't start. You stop. And to do. <laughs> I heard that, Josh. You That's like a, a, a scun, like a, 
like a, a nail gun or a staple gun. All right, you ready? Hi. Hi. How's it going? It's going. How you doing? <laughs> I'm, I'm I couldn't with, even get cast. I'm so filled with hatred right now. I don't. I could get cast as a guy in a, in a movie who answers the phone. Wow. Hi. Hi. Uh, how are you, Andy? Hey. 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 Phone. Phone. I like phone. That's my monster. That's my back That's and good. monster guy. Good. Soup. Monster like soup. I don't think he ever said monster like soup. Edible hotline. Yes. I am not on ed I am not on who who isn't on edibles who doesn't all of a sudden deny it? <laughs> what edibles? Look, every week they come out with a new fruity flavor of a high dose gummy. It's a gummy. It could be aspirin, it could be yeah. vitamins as far as I know. Right. And if it's bigger for the same price, if it's a fifty milligrams for the same price, you can get it. If it's 100 milligrams per dose, try it. All right, that's my pot chunk for the night. Yeah. Uh, have you been watching the Wild the Wild series? I'm rooting for the Dodgers, and I'm rooting for Clayton Kershaw. Yeah. Because he's had an unfortunate postseason at times. Because you've heard of him. <laughs> that's about right. I don't know anything about on that on that Tampa Bay team. No. First of all, that's not even a team. It never was a team when I was younger. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Where, who? They're not even the ones who beat the Yankees. Who were the ones who beat the Yankees that year? Was it Arizona? The Marlins. Well, the, the Marlins. The Diamondbacks. The Diamondbacks. Okay. They're not even the Diamondbacks, are they? <laughs> are they an American League team? Are they? Uh, yes. And they're an expansion team? The Devil Rays? Or the, they're now the Rays, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're an expansion team, but most teams are <laughs> at some point. Oh, okay. I didn't know you were going to go full existential philosophy on me. Yes, no, the Rays is one of the most recent additions. But, you know, yeah. we're talking 15 years here. But it's also Tampa. I don't want to say something bad about a city, but that place is horrible. <laughs> it's true. Now, is it Tampa Bay nicer than Tampa? There's just, they're just a bad energy in that whole town. No, it's the same place. Oh, worst comedy club I ever played, Side Splitters. Yeah. First of all, would you go to a place called Side Splitters? Uh, no, I would not. Uh, even in back in the I day, tend not to frequent places named after medical conditions. <laughs> Side Splitters is twice as bad as the Funny Bone. Twice as bad. Wow, because it's because right? it's split. Because <laughs> no, I guess the Funny Bone is the worst. It's got to be the worst. Because why would you use that as a name? Well, but for no, a club? but there were good Funny Bones around the country. Not a lot. <laughs> but, but the idea of, of you hit my funny bone never was meant as a laugh. It was always meant for pain. Uh, true. True enough. But I know it's. But uh, side, it's side splitting is also, yes, a painful condition. <laughs> actually, now that you say side splitters, I actually could see like, oh, I was so funny. I, I can see that. But not at that club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I've played so many. I think I've played more bad places than you have, right? Or I've done worse in clubs than you have. I, yeah, uh, it's hard to say. Uh, I think uh, you've probably felt more pain in more places than me. Because, you know, let's be honest, when it goes bad for Kindler, <laughs> there isn't My another, you don't have another gear to go to. No, and I, I middled for Carol Leifer and was so bad all week. Yeah. And and just set up a terrible table for her because I hated the crowd. Yeah. And the last show, I just put the microphone down and walked off. All right. Which I'm, sure, help her? which I'm sure she thought was funny. How does that help her? No, she didn't think it was funny. No. I, mean, no. I don't think she even knows it. She was too into She was still uh, in her headliner world at that point. Yeah. She was just coming pretty, down. Pretty impressed with herself. Yeah, she was playing. You know, she didn't need this gig at this horrible club. All right. <laughs> And she was getting paid probably 80s money. Right. Which I don't really know what that was. But at one point, it was enough to get a lot of cocaine for some of the comics. I want to be clear, though. I didn't. I mixed up two stories. She, I opened up for I, I opened up her somewhere else. I don't oh, okay. Know the name of the place. Size Splitters is, a, is, there was a good pizza place a couple of doors down. That's the only thing that got me through that week. Pizza cutters. <laughs> Dough Why'd cutters. You call it? 
Why do you say? Why do you think that's the name of it? Because it's <laughs> right next to side splitters. <laughs> D- oh God! You know, if Tampa was that as you know, and the I gummies have, I, don't the, the gummies don't make you smarter, Andy. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's true. That's nice. It's true. Then why does it say Smarty Gummies, the smartest gummies in town? It says it right here on the outside. Yeah. Ultra potent, wa- watermelon, cannabis infused, smart, smart stuff. <laughs> Step up to the smart stuff. Right. The guy at the store told me that within 10 minutes of eating a gummy, you I'd be the, like a. You get the Einstein hair. <laughs> I, I would like to have one minute of the uh, scarecrow, the, the change scarecrow. I love that, that one line that I'll never remember what he says. When he all of a sudden gets a brain or a yeah. certificate for a brain. Yeah. Well, I, I believe that the coordinate. Maybe what he's saying is so primitive now at this point. It's not even just long division or something. Uh, yeah, I can't. I can't. I can't pull it up. I know what you're talking but you about. Pull up, I, I can't you, pull it up. Though. Can you pull up the memory? Oh, you can't pull up the memory of what you know, the general gist. Yeah, I know the moment. Right. I don't know the yeah. dialogue. Yeah. Like if I was to say to you, you know the general gist of you would know the general vibe I'd sure. be throwing down, sure. right? Sure, when they go through the vaudeville poppy field. <laughs> if I said to you, Trying to avoid being sued by a 300 year old man uh, who right. wants royalties. I thought you were auditioning, little fella. I'll kick your ass when I see you. You know what? You're making me mad now. I'm, <laughs> I give and I give and I give. I give 15% with all the distracting chemicals I in, ingest. Right. I'm so glad you give me the same as you give your manager. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. One, uh, one, uh, Weinstein, Jew, uh, where does it say the Jew gets it? <laughs> where, where is it written that the Jew gets the, 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 from the other Jew? What do you guys call yourself? The two Jews? One's not as tall? What do you call yourself? One and a half Jews. <laughs> <laughs> one and one half wandering Jews. I don't know that song. Is that a Paul Simon song? Why, well, yes, it is. Hmm. That's pretty good that I was able to pick up from the lilt in your voice. You know? Yeah. Also, you, also you know the song, so it's not it's not like No, I don't know that yes, song. Yes, you do. Uh, say let me give me give me a clue again. One and one half wandering Jews. Free to wander wherever they choose. Is this from Graceland? Are traveling together in the Sangre de Cristo, the blood of Christ mountains right. in New Mexico. How do you know these words? These words I don't know. On the last leg of a journey they started long time ago. The arc of a love affair. Hands rolling down her hair. It's hearts and I bones. Saw, I do remember that. You know, that makes me want to get that album again because... That's the one that has allergies on it too, right? And yes. I don't know that as as well as I know other albums. So I have a feeling there's quite a treat that awaits me. It's kind of like every other song is really good on that album. Like almost, it holds that pattern almost throughout. <laughs> you know how many times a day I think about boring Cat Stevens? You know, <laughs> you know it's like. What's happening tonight? Cat Stevens is coming over. Oh, I don't want to hear that fucking. He's, he's doing a cover? He's doing T for the Tillerman again. Oh, my God. Sounds awful. Sing along, everybody. It's a T for the Tillerman, Jacob for the Sun. Sounds more like Geezer and the Fire Cat to me. <laughs> Sharpen those jokes up. I'm going to put them in the next state of the industry. There you go. <laughs> the state of the music industry. Until I got hurt, I was looking. I was the same as you. Until I got, until I got hurt. That's later, Cass Stevens, right? You say you want to see the truth, but it's hard to find. find. Television on. He made a meal. You have to admit that he made a meal. Your friends don't have the time. He, he, he. So you ride around in your car. 
Put on the radio. Sorry. He made a meal. He made a meal out of why don't the children play? Uh oh. And then he comes back 30 years later. Where do the children play? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's tired. You don't want a guy who's exhausted. Well, I think it's <laughs> a play in jumbo. <laughs> I'm making a ride. I'm very tired. Can you make me some tea for the Zoom? <laughs> <laughs> he does a lot of comedy, but. By the way, I was working. Uh, I was working on my uh, Garrison Keeler. So, can you do a couple seconds? Sure, please. Ooh. Welcome to the Writer's Almanac. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. That was a good three welcome seconds. To, welcome to the Writer's Almanac. On this day in 1857, Sir Thomas Mann was born, known as the Old Whistler. <laughs> <laughs> he is known as the Old Whistler. <laughs> He wrote he wrote 17, 17 sonnets by the time he was 12 years old. And then he's sexually assaulted. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I can't do this. Sexually assaulted. Garrison Keillor jokes. Because I don't know that he so much as... I think he just was very inappropriate with every woman he ever met. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> hello, ma- hello. Oh, you do enjoy my guy noir character. Well, it's very understandable. <laughs> Would you like to meet little guy? Would you want a? How about a real tasty treat? Doesn't they have one of those uh, things like the the food is tasty or something? There's the powder milk biscuits, and they're ta- they're tasty going down and the, no, you're you know, just, something like that. You're doing like you're just doing impressions of impressions. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the candy! Man. Here's me kind of sounding like someone doing Sammy Davis. <laughs> oh, the candy man cat. Uh, <laughs> hey, here's a guy who sounds a little like Anthony Newley. Who can I turn to? There's a star falling. man waiting in the sky. <laughs> this is the worst act. This is the worst act that ever tried to hit <laughs> Reno, I guess. <laughs> oh, that was good. Oh, the that endor- was the endorphins good. are flowing now. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Oh, by the way, I did get help for my back. Oh, did you? From uh, from whom? From the recumbent bike. Oh, yeah? It, yeah, like just one day on it. It felt better. Now, you know, I don't want to say it's fool's gold, but maybe I maybe the walking around doesn't... Susan said the walking around, the recumbent bike gets into the into the thing without activating the thing. <laughs> <laughs> but I did, it, I did it four times last week, 30 minutes a day. Good. And I lost four pounds in my penis. I only lost weight in my penis. You can hardly see me now. <laughs> what a creepy. It's like a creep. The creepiest part of your life comes creeping out of the corner. By the way, I was very disappointed in my friend Jeffrey Tubin's penis for not getting his back. <laughs> if that ever happens to you, I'm telling you, you're not muted, pal. You can't do penis material about other penises in the news. I'm I believe telling you. if anyone can do dick jokes, it's me. I I want my own show, The Weekend Penis News. <laughs> a weekend? Like a weekend? <laughs> <laughs> it's The Weekend Penis News. Starring the, week, just... starring the Weekend Penis. Corn didn't... There's a field of corn that just barely... Grew halfway and then they had to mulch it under. Man, that's not quite like a penis. You know what? I can't work on the show. <laughs> I'm not too close to the material. Your foreskin shadowing. Don't slide in and out <laughs> of that character. Okay? Don't get lazy on that character on me. Okay. Sometimes it's hard. It's hard taking the hat on and off fast enough. Sometimes. <laughs> I wish, I, God, I wish that was true. <laughs> it can be in the theater of your mind. Until we're, until, oh. until the COVID passes, it can be true to you. No, no, I think when we do another one of our famous in-club tours. Yeah. 
What's not a, only will we, Daddy, we what's never... a comedy club? Well, son. <laughs> oh, son. It's Wait, a place see, where people, people used to go to hear other, other fellows talk about their penises. <laughs> why are people sitting together more than two? And why does, do they have uh, things on? I don't know. I lost. I lost what the bit was and where I was in the bit. Ah, good. All at once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a, what I would call a delightful diversion. Yeah, from what? Um, from the meat and potatoes, the hard news penis bits. <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh man. Oh, so can you tell me what happened? Something happened in the. News. Oh, what was Jeffrey Tubin doing? I I don't haven't heard the whole story. He wasn't on the air, right? He was in a meeting. He was in a Zoom meeting. Like okay, not on the air, a Zoom meeting. A Zoom meeting. Okay, and uh, so he mixed that up with his masturbation seminar. Uh, I think from what I the article I read said, <laughs> uh, he thought that the people in the meeting had broken up into groups. And he was on a break from the meeting, so he thought he had muted his camera on Zoom. Oh God! And then he proceeded to do what? Uh, what I read, he did some other kind of chat thing that involved taking his penis out. <laughs> you mean he was like communicating with somebody else? Yes. <laughs> like you know, some sort of you know, I'm sure online chat cam girl thing. Oh, God. Who has that number? No. Oh, my God. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a good but moment. There's... It's not a good moment for anybody involved. No, because you can, you know, do that in your own time. <laughs> yeah. Well, he thought he was, apparently. <laughs> uh, he thought he thought he would go to the Zoom meeting and be able to <laughs> masturbate on his own. Nope. I can't do the voice. <laughs> Anything but, anything, anything but. Is he still alive? Jeffrey Tubin, he wishes he wasn't. <laughs> uh, 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 not Cass Stevens. It's not Tommy Lasorda. It's the, the, not. It's Vince Scully. It is Vince Scully. And yes, he is. I'm very much alive and hiding out from the COVID. Now, what is your feeling? Have you come around on the black people? <laughs> Kneeling for the national. Anthem. Upon further review, I am back on board with the blacks. <laughs> no, don't, don't say it. Don't say it that way, Vin. <laughs> Some of my best friends are the blacks. Vin, you know you're. Everybody says you're a legend, but I've been looking up at people who are contemporaries of yours, and they don't seem to have late 1700s views. Middle age views uh, from the Middle Ages of about black people. I just sounds a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> okay, I guess I'm not good. Apparently, you thought this was a teachable moment. Anything but. <laughs> you know the thing is, like, to really, what's so good about that story is that you're. It's just you're kind of like you could be zoned out watching a Vin Scully, and and all of a sudden he just. He takes it up a half of a notch, and you'll never forget it the rest of your life. Yeah, it was a radio call, by the way. Oh, it was a radio call. Yeah. Uh, did you used to like listen to him when you were doing stuff around the house and stuff? Uh, it was probably in the car. Oh, that's right. I did listen to a lot of a lot of Dodgers. I listened to a lot of Dodger talk. Yeah. And uh, you know, Laker talk. I, I used to love listening to those shows. You know? Yeah. Hey, look. Uh, I think Shaq is too old. I, that, I know I'm going to be hated for this. Blah, 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 blah. City of Can't Industry, you you're on the air. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand. What I don't understand is how Vladi Divots didn't get fired. Blah, blah, blah. You're an idiot. Ah. Tustin. Hello. <laughs> Tustin, California. Hello. What's your question for Adolf Hitler? Hey, look. Uh... I don't like Chick Hearn anymore. I mean, uh, it's in the it's in the refrigerator. Let's get a new uh, announcer. What do you think, Jim Rome? Tarzana, go, <laughs> go. Where should I go to Encino? Turn down <laughs> your radio, Tarzana. That's not my radio. 
That's not my popcorn. Turn down your wife, Tarzana. Oh, my God. Your voice started to crack in that last Tarzana. No, that was an actual crack in the (laughs) So did uh, I I heard coming on the news tonight that Iran and uh, I know we're not supposed to talk about current events, but Iran and Russia and then this guy who's the DNI, who's a who's Ratcliffe. Yeah. Don't I just want to say. Without knowing the details, don't trust that guy, Ratcliffe. Do not trust Ratcliffe. No. He's a weasel. He's a, First of all, he is a rat. Yeah. Yes, and, he is. Uh, he's, <laughs> yes. he's the guy. You see what I did there, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's the guy from the congressional hearings who said, Now, I'm not saying that President Trump should have more rights than the regular citizen. But God damn it, he shouldn't have less rights. Oh, I like that guy. Make him DNI. Right? Isn't that what he did? Something like that. I don't think he has a southern accent, but yeah. He doesn't have a southern accent. <laughs> Who doesn't? Who doesn't? Trump or Ratcliffe? Uh, neither. Neither. Oh, I think Ratcliffe's from the South. Oh, 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 au oh, contraire. I have a really great ear. It's my mouth that's fucked up. <laughs> I'm enjoying, I know I'm enjoying this way more than you are, but let me tell you something. <laughs> You're going to look back on this show, not maybe this show, but you're going to look back on the, maybe you won't look back on it at all. But if you do, this will be one of your favorite uh, Wednesday. I call this the Wednesday Wednesday nights with Maury. <laughs> yeah. Is that an old reference now, you think? <laughs> it's a little old. A little old. I think it's old. <laughs> How about Iron John? Is that too old for Iron John? I think Iron John is older than Tuesdays with Maury. <laughs> That's true. I did love that guy for a little while, whoever that guy was. The Iron John guy? Tuesday. No, 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 no. You didn't really think I was out like in a medicine circle or whatever the hell they call it. I don't know. You, I could see you being drawn in with drugs. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. With drugs, any premise could work. Huh. <laughs> strange, strange men chance. Will there be drugs? We're killing okay. Jews, but with mushrooms? I'm in. <laughs> oh, this was good. Yeah, I was on my game tonight. Yeah, it too. seems like we've gone longer than 26 minutes, but we haven't because the first seven minutes of the show was me. Uh, and I turn this off. Do I turn this on? Do I turn that off? Yeah, that but, off. But I'm trying to. I'm trying to give the illusion that we've got this together. Oh, so don't say anything. That'd be better. That would help the illusion. Oh. <laughs> well, somebody because, doesn't like to know, edit because I've somebody. T- I've done enough of the. Uh, the, fu- stuff the out. fumbling Andy gag in the show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 hey, I thought I was going to say toggle, hello, Josh. Toggle, 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 toggle. What's an input? Where's the output go? I I, I included a, a snippet of our conversation on Twitter. Yeah. And I found I more that. things from there. Uh, uh, what did you think of that? Uh, I thought it was cute. It's rock solid, but I have another one where I'm saying to you, "Do you do you hear? I do you hear me?" And and or something like that. You go, "Well, I'm having a conversation with you right now." Something like that. <laughs> classic. Yeah, it's classic bumbling. It's not even bumbling and bumbling her. <laughs> it's just me. Just know that I can't ever do, come through in the clutch or something like that. I'm Sorry. not. That, I'm not that guy. No, all right. <laughs> Uh, I'm good for you a don't want relief. you don't want the ball. No, don't don't put the <laughs> ball in my hand. I'm the guy who, if you bring me in, and I have one wild pitch, I try and yank myself. Right. <laughs> oh, I'm not. If I don't the, have it today. If the pitching coach doesn't come out, I fake a hamstring injury. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> maybe it was too soon. Hmm. I'm drinking iced coffee in case you're. You're wondering. I wasn't. I saw you were a little bit positive about the election today. I saw it was very nice. That's my posture. That's what I'm going with. Uh, that's your. Is that what causes your posture? I thought it was you slumping for many years. Oh, this is fun going out with a hundred year old man. <laughs> <laughs> I never had back pain. I couldn't relate to you until the last week. I have severe back pain today and the last few days. It's getting worse. It is actually going in the wrong direction right now, yeah. 
Uh, I'm sorry about that. I, sh- I shouldn't joke, but uh, you're going to have to do something, but not now, though, right? Unless I, it gets I- acute. We'll see. We'll see. It's not my normal. <clears throat> it's not my normal back pain. So. You mean like it could be a new thing? Uh, a new thing or a new stage of the old thing. Right. Right. But I'll tell you one thing you don't want. You don't want a question and answer period about whatever you're going you're going through because that's not your favorite thing. <laughs> you don't enjoy it. <laughs> oh, you where exactly is the current pain? Yeah. It's in the fucking back, you stupid idiot. <laughs> you want to come over here? I'll show you where it is. Ba boom. I don't know why you'd punch me, but but and why you'd go ba boom. <laughs> no, I'd like to think I might I would make a more intimidating noise. <laughs> uh, I know this is going to sound stupid. But you haven't tried to do any meditation things with it. It's beyond. It's just. You haven't tried to do any meditation things with it. Now that sounds. Is stupid. that Cliff Clavin? No, that's just just you sounding stupid. That, that's your voice of. I don't think that's going to fly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this is going to get past standards. But uh, did you just no, ask if med- I tried any meditation with my back? <laughs> Stuff like that for pain or something. Yeah, no, it's not that kind no, of pain. It's, it's not more, that kind of pain. It's more get up. Make an old man noise because it hurts. Yeah, and it's actually happening. So you're a little <laughs> Eastern meditation. Uh, hey, look, uh, look, Gandhi. Thanks for trying out your little uh, Mandarin. Now, what do they call it? I have a man- better chance mantra. of praying away the gay. I think you. I think you're right. Dennis Miller is going to come back with a postmodern, post right wing comedy that's going to be like that. I'm just He's trying to break I'm, through. I'm trying to comprehend what post right wing is. Is that it doesn't is that exist. swinging it back exist. the other way? It's never happened. Ah. It's never happened. It's never been like isn't oh, that Ezra the, Pound. Isn't that the Lincoln Project? <laughs> this is the kind of thing. If you had could book a corporate gig right now, that would kill. There you go. What are these people? The Lincoln Project over here? Ah. <laughs> oh. You know what? It feels good just to be with you on the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing. Uh, I'm doing a uh, uh, Tom Arnold show on Friday before our show. Really? Yeah. At one o'clock. I don't know if he goes long. I might have to. Let me know. Just tell him I say hi. Of course. If I don't mention the podcast. And you, this, no, actually, I thought you'd, I would get a gift basket after how great I did with the podcast on the uh, state of the industry. I thought I would get something. What do I want from P? What do I want from just doing a simple you job? Gotta, you got to check. Oh, <laughs> thank you. And that was so good because it didn't taxes. I, I think I mentioned that to you before. And, and I want people thinking like uh, Dana Schwartz is going to be going, you know, calling up the IRS. Right. <laughs> But I'm declaring it, but it's better when it's not taxed. Right. Yeah, you can. It's just, it, yeah. I'll get it back on my taxes here, but what if I don't do my taxes here? Okay, I'm sorry about that guy. And I'm sorry about this person. Yeah. And I I had a, a rough uh, therapy session today also. On a Wednesday? Yeah, because I missed it yesterday, uh, t- Tuesday. I missed it because I... I had to get these papers notarized and signed, and uh, I kind of had an OCD. Are we calling it an OCD avalanche? Okay. To the point where I, I couldn't understand what I was looking. It's like, sign these two pages, notarize that page, bring the other thing, and then the document was all one document, so it wasn't like one through 37. It was like page one of three, yeah. page one of one, one of two. So then I finally had to cancel and reschedule, which she allowed me to do, which was very nice, of my therapy session. And I just walked down to the mail place and, and just had them do everything. Everything. Uh. And you know what else I had them do? They FedEx. I paid extra to FedEx it from their place. Because I'm an adult. Josh. There you go. And I felt, I, I came out of there. The bill was $140, and uh, many of you may say it's too much money. That's pretty high said, for uh, how much is the, was the straight notarization? Well, there were four, there were, ended up being four notarizations. Then I did uh, express overnight priority on FedEx. Uh-huh. 
which was a healthy chunk of change. Before noon? Before noon, because wow. if I don't want my brother wow. to be. I don't want to let my brother down. Yeah, I understand. Plus, you'll get it, about, you'll, plus you'll get it all back after New Year's. Look, if I had known that telling you that fucking thing would have you <laughs> blabbing about it every goddamn show, I better not have you sniffing around every January 1st. Uh, oh. uh, Andy, uh, my lawnmower is not working. Could you buy me one? <laughs> hi, hi, me. It's me. Can I have my check? I know you're closed. <laughs> uh, you know what? Why do we? Why do I have to come off like a fucking idiot from these stories? <laughs> How is this endearing? Is this what keeps people coming back week after week? My horrible personality and all of its ramifications. <laughs> I guess it is. No, it isn't, Josh. That's not how I'm going to describe it on the Tom Arnold show tomorrow. All right. I'm going to say it's a um uh, uh it's a uh laugh per it's a laugh per minute uh it's a romp it's a good natured romp. Are you going on to discuss a particular thing on his show? I think it's going to be political because I I uh when he uh goes into strange territories I I always back him up I don't back him up like going I I also know that he spoke to Michael Cohn's parrot I don't back that part of it up All right. <laughs> But I, uh, I, 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 in general enjoy. I in general enjoy uh, his political point of view. Get him started on Mark Burnett is my advice. Oh, seriously, that would be great, right? Yeah. Okay, I will. I'm not gonna say you sent me, right? Huh? I'm not gonna say it's your question, right? You can say Josh told me to get you started on Mark Burnett. <laughs> <laughs> That guy is a monster, I assume. Yeah. He thinks he actually has uh, all this tape is what I think he thinks, right? Well, no. I mean, he's been in actual physical altercations with him. Are you kidding me? No. <laughs> Where, what did I miss? I look it up. <laughs> okay, I'll look it up. You don't have to do all the work. All right. I don't want to end up in jail just being on his show. Let me just say, well, last time I interviewed him on the other podcast... Yeah, it got to a point as he was telling the story. He literally had his hand around my throat. <laughs> to, what he was demonstrating the yes, story? Yes, J Josh, how, you're not supposed to let yourself get into situations. No, like that. It, was, it was funny until he squeezed a little hard, but that's okay. Oh, <laughs> he is delightful. I find him delightful. He's he's Tom Arnold. He's everything. He really is. <laughs> he's everything. He's a delight and a disgrace. He's all of it. <laughs> And when I'm talking to a Tom Arnold, I am going to be the sidekick. You know what I'm saying? Whatever he says. Yeah. Sure. Follow sure. that leader. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I know that you're onto something here. <laughs> I can't believe I like Mike, Michael Cohn now, <laughs> in a way, you know? Yeah. I shouldn't like Michael Cohn. You really shouldn't. I understand the, the inclination to like him. He also plugs his book every five seconds. Yeah. As I said in my book, what the hell's wrong with Trump? <laughs> right. I almost had an impression there. Give me a little Michael Cohn. That's putting you on the spot. You, I actually did one the know. other day that I was pretty happy with. Let's see if I can get it back. Well, okay. Uh, Mr. Trump would say to me, <laughs> uh, Michael, go down and kill that young kid. And I was part of the cult. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a different part of your range. I'd say Mr. Trump. Are you sure about this? And he'd say he was like a mafioso, you know. He'd never say, yes, go kill the little kid. But you'd know that he'd be meant, go kill the kid. <laughs> it's, all so my, it's, all, the it's all in my book, Andy. <laughs> I also like when he goes on one of these. I bought everything Mr. Only... Trump was selling. But uh, uh, <laughs> By the way. I've been taping this phone call. There are a lot of Californians here, are there not? Are you, are you familiar with, uh, with where I live in, uh, near Los Angeles, Van Nuys? Well, do you, know, do you happen to know how Van Nuys got its name? Oh, I should tell you, it's a great, it's a great historical sidelight. <laughs> in the early days of the pioneers, hundreds of years ago, when they first came in the covered wagons from the east to the west, 
They went all the way across and they got to the top of the Santa Monica Mountains. And they looked down and they saw the beautiful blue Pacific Ocean. And they saw this vast expanse of green valley in front of them. And then the assistant chief pioneer turned to the chief pioneer and he said, Oh, chief pioneer, what do you think of this beautiful vast expanse of gorgeous green valley? And the chief pioneer said, Van Nuys. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, Josh. How you doing? Good. How are you, Andy? Good. You having a good day? I really am. Really, oh, that's good. I really, really am. Oh, God. Why? Was that bad at acting that we can't even have a regular conversation anymore? Well, you've seen us acting, so yeah. <laughs> uh, I didn't. I, I just got off the, the podcast with uh, uh, Tom Arnold. Tom Arnold, but I did not get to talk about he doesn't. I think you were trying to prank me because they they don't want to talk about politics now over there. No. No. What did they talk about? Just me and he talked about thought spiral a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did he act like he knew me? He did. Okay, good. But he didn't like say, "Are you kidding me?" No. He, no. Did he go, buddy? He, he certainly didn't go. Oh, you got to listen to that show. No, that's my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> and then he has a he has a uh, a co-host uh, Sasha somebody. He's very nice, very nice people. Everything was nice. Everything's gone well. It was a good day. Uh everything was good. That's fantastic. <laughs> That's good, good. Don't even <laughs> you know, there's no reason for me to even sell it as being good oh. when it was so good. Don't poke the beast. Don't um I couldn't think of one other is there's got to be more examples of that. Don't don't snow the snowman. That's my. That's not the same thing. Oh. Don't poke the beast. Don't poke the bear. Don't. Uh, don't count your chickens before they're enraged. I like that. I liked your delivery, and I also liked. Uh, did I mention that I like your delivery because I like that as well. You know what? I hope the rest of the the conversation doesn't go like this. And I, I blame. Not, not only do I blame myself, I blame other people in my family for how I am. Yeah. Yeah. Bring them into it. What did you think of the debate last night? Um, I thought it was a quieter version of a nightmare. <laughs> I thought, you know, I thought I thought Biden did very well. I thought Trump, you know, behaved like a human monster as opposed to a monster monster. So when he's like that, where he's like, it's it's just it's just a an accident that he happens to be slightly calmer. It doesn't mean anything. No, I mean he knew that he would, you know. That they had the power of the mic. <laughs> that's, that's right. what, he knew that. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, they will. They used it a couple of times. It went right off. Yeah. Nobody said if he was tested before. She did a great job, Kristen Walker. Uh, she did, but it was the mic rule that really made her the hero. Yeah, I'm glad there's no more of them. That's what I'll say. Me too. And um, it didn't make me want to go climb into the uh, bin and get my vote back. <laughs> I, I I mailed my, my ballot finally. Most for me, very early. Did year. you mail it or put it in the Dropbox? I went to mail it because I decided, you know what? I'm not giving in to the... I'm not giving... Well, not to you. Not not anything you're doing wrong. Yeah. But I just felt like it's it says that you, it can arrive 17 days after the election. Uh... I really think it's going to get there between October 23rd and November 4th. I think it will, too. And uh, uh, one of those boxes were lit on fire. Yeah. So that's what I was worried about. Were you really? Not really. I had no <laughs> feelings about it either way. <laughs> Once I said, Susan, should I bring you to the thing? Shouldn't I just drop it up? Okay, let's see. Jaime will take it. I said, Jaime, can you take it? He said, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I said, Jaime, you know what would be funny? Why don't you fill out the part like I can't fill out my own ballot? So we did that, and we did some joke pictures with it. And then, very funny, at the end, I put some white powder on the outside of the envelope, like in a little like a little plastic bag. Yeah. And I attached that. And then I said, not dangerous next to it. Not, not, right. what's the name of that one thing you don't want? Love the ashamed boys. What don't you want, though, in the mail coming to you that's a powder? What is it you don't want? Anthrax, generally. Yes, anthrax. You know what I did? I, I attached anthrax 
to the uh, package. The band, Josh. The band. All right. Just you as, get it? Just as repulsive. Right. Here's somebody who's so un who has such horrible self esteem. The good really news is asking. there's a cure for the disease. What? <laughs> I don't get that. There isn't one for the band, would be my point. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know there was a, a cure for anthrax. It's like an antidote? Uh, there's like a massive antibiotic uh, dose. And you're saying not for the band? None for the band. Oh, my God. Deafness I never th- is the only cure I never for knew band. you were so... I know you're so upside down with, with, that, with that group. That's my favorite group. Huh. Good banter. Good banter. You think this is good banter? No, I, I don't. didn't even get to, to reference <laughs> Fog Hat. That's what would have made a good banter. Yeah. I haven't had this much. I haven't been this bored since my last Fog Hat concert. Have you ever heard Fog Hat? Is there a song by Fog Hat that I should know? I'm sure there's a song by Fog Hat that we both know. It's a terrible name, right? It's not a good name. Is it is it the idea that that's what you wear in the middle of a fog that you can see through the fog? I, and no, that's where the, no, I don't where think, the band? No, no, I don't think that's it at all. Are you sure? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's not. It sounds like it's the band, like, I'm the fog light. It's not a fog light, no, right? No, it's a fog, fog hat. hat. Yeah, that would be my, that's where my counterpoint comes. <laughs> so what are you saying? It's a fog, it's a hat that makes you, the fog not that dangerous? Uh, or Or a hat made of fog. <laughs> a terrible group. It may a terrible be. name may, for the group. We don't know if it's a hat made to wear in the fog or a hat made of fog <laughs> itself. Well, I again ask you, is a real estate novelist somebody who writes novels about real estate or someone who sells real estate during the day and writes novels at night? I think it's all of the above. <laughs> Susan made me a hamburger I think it's last someone night. who sells real estate during the day and uses their expertise to fictionalize it at night into novel form. <laughs> Oh my God! You're like you know you're you're playing three dimensional chess over there today, Josh. I'm sorry to interrupt your great story. Susan made you a hamburger. Hamburger? <laughs> Fuck you, you piece of garbage! <laughs> you're a piece of garbage. You know that? Here's my new arguing guy. You ready? You're a piece of garbage. You know that? No, I'm no. not. Huh? I you are. Uh, What's that smell? Is it garbage? I uh, imagine it's coming from you, from your argument. <laughs> Oh, God, you know what? You probably, this is probably annoying to you, but I feel better after the first few minutes of our conversation. Like we're, we're getting there. We really get it. We got this. Yeah, it's like stretching before a workout. <laughs> I'm going to predict what the first letter is going to be. It's going to be from sous vide. Right. And it's going to be, I can't, I don't know. I'm not good at guessing. Well, you could actually open Twitter and look, but <laughs> but, oh, I'll, but I'll tell you. I forgot you. to do a reminder. Oh, that, oh well. you know, I really f- fell down the job this We're week. We're screwed. Savid so so does, in fact, say, hey, tub of parquet, <laughs> has the situation improved? Well, Park, oh, what, what, it's, what a li- t- it's a little better. <laughs> what is the parquet? Tell me again how that commercial works. Better. Butter. 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 Ask me how the situation is. How's the situation? Better. Oh, yeah, I finally got it. All right. <laughs> is it, are, I did not. If, if I lived to be 4,000 years old, I would never have made the connection that you were going to take a butter and make it better to fit the question. Are we going to have to do the Chris Hardwick after joke show for every joke today? No, I'm done. All I'm right. done. Okay. He Ant wants to know, if you were a sandwich, what one would you be? Who suddenly he ants like a hungry Barbara Walters. <laughs> I would be soft pork <laughs> on, on a roll. I'll say. <laughs> I don't know. I'd like to be a BLT because it's so tasty. Yeah. I don't know if the, if the winning move is to be a repulsive sandwich. <laughs> thus, thus extending your existence or to be the best sandwich on the block. So mm. so at least you lead a prideful but short exist short time here on earth. I think you've uh, I think you've uh entered metaphor canyons. <laughs> I might have. Uh I you know, so I can't make a pick. 
Sometimes the best pick is no pick. No. Thank you. Kirk says, since Andy don't like MST talk, how about every, <laughs> everybody loves Raymond? How many short cracks did Brad Garrett make to Andy? Oh, uh, Andy, where are you? I can't see. Oh, oh there, there he is. Oh, is Andy here again? I, I couldn't see because he's so short. Where's Andy? I'm going blind. I can't see him. Oh, he's short. No, he didn't really didn't. He didn't make fun of me, although he was very Rickles-y like. Yeah. But he didn't. There's so many things to go after with me. Where's Andy? He's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes he would mix up the premises. Uh, sh- I just finished. I just finished my shake. Yeah. Was that a protein? F- okay. Protein shake. So that's a beverage, not a physical activity. <laughs> Do you know that I go take twerking lessons now? Do you? No. Oh. <laughs> Fished in. You summoning, you summoning fake energy made me laugh. <laughs> well, you know, that's what yes and is all about, my friend. <laughs> Shucky Ducky says, uh, going to watch a face in the crowd today. Don't spoil it, but does Andy Griffith use racial slurs and light the world on fire in the third act? <laughs> that's on TCM now, I think. Is it? Yeah. I know this was on TCM. And I would watch it, but I've seen it too many times. I think that was a reference to my uh, tweet about uh, how it's starting to feel like the third act of a face in the crowd instead of the second, finally. Oh, well, people are... Uh, okay, well, I didn't. I actually saw that tweet and didn't remember it. That's okay. I'm just saying that that might have been what why he was asking about the third act. I think it was why. In those terms. <laughs> Shucky Ducky also says, Happy belated birthday to Andy Kindler and the greatest awful joke in history. What? Too soon, ye. That is the greatest joke in history. It may be the greatest joke in history. It really is. I need a place to do it again. I don't know. Maybe it's not, maybe that joke will draw me out of the business. Where am I going to do that joke on? The soon ye comedy hour. Exactly. Huh? Yeah. What to Andy? What too late, ye? Okay, sorry. Sorry is going to be my new tagline. Jason Parton says, Happy 180th, fellas. You've done good work. Be ready for your quarterly review. Josh, you've got documentaries under your belt. When will you step up and do the mockumentary? Can it be about Andy's success as an improv comic? Titled, (laughs) Yes, Andy. That's actually uh, the great Zach Galifianakis. Uh, pitched that as a show for me yeah. a couple of years ago. Yes, Andy. I'm just saying I uh, th- that's not the first time. <laughs> We've all cycled through Yes, Andy, I'll be honest. I won't. I, I'm glad you finally were able to fess up. <laughs> <laughs> um, But uh, I'm not, not looking to do a mockumentary very much. No, it is I a, don't think so. It is a uh, heavily trodden uh, path at this point. And when one of the greatest movies of all time was a mockumentary, it's hard. You know? One of the biggest movies of all time was a mockumentary. Don't. <laughs> Are you mocking my mockumentary? I am mocking my mockumentary. How come Lucky isn't, how come Lucky's in a completely different mood than last week when Lucky wanted to push you down the stairs into the rest of the family? She's not in the room right now. Yeah, but she, why is she? And, and Andy Kindler asks another useless question. Uh, Adam Nicolet says, uh, will Andy raise or lower his cameo rate once Mr. Trump gets on the platform? Oh, what does that mean, on the platform? I don't even know. The cameo that. platform. Oh, he won't do that. He won't do that. He will never be on cameo. He'll be on right wing cameo. He'll be on Trumpio. Trumpio. Hi. For a million dollars, I'll, I say to you. Getting so close. I, I, every time I think of him, I get a little bit sick. Really, a presidential campaign is pretty much just large-scale cameo anyway. <laughs> exactly. I'll appear. You send money. There's a lot of, mo- a lot of money in being raised in this uh, politics game. It's true. There's got to be an angle. If only corporations were people. <laughs> get somebody working on that. Mark Thompson says, gentlemen, on behalf of the universe, I would like to apologize for the Jeffrey Tubin Zoom incident after the State of the Industry speech. That had to be a free 15 minutes minimum. Now, 
<laughs> you know, I don't. Uh, no, am I no, lost again? Huh? I lost it. I lost. I got lost again. What? What? what how could that have lost me? Perhaps because he missed a word in his syntax, but the general gist of it is he's saying it's too bad that the Jeffrey Tubin thing didn't happen before the state of the end. Oh, I would have given me more fodder. No, we wouldn't have talked about it is what you were going to say, right? Yeah. No, <laughs> because stories like that, it's like, uh, there's no more meat on the bone, so to speak after a, a very short time in this day and age. I mean, I learned that on Twitter too, where I, I, I probably, there's so many things I, I don't tweet anymore because I realize, well, Everybody started bad. Yeah. First Thought Theater seconds. has run its course. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fun to think about the Tubin incident because I just don't even get it. But Well, it's know. wonderfully shameful and yet not that harmful. True. You know? True. He'll never get over it if that's any comfort. <laughs> no, I don't think he'll shake it off completely. And I do mean the incident, not, you know. I knew that. I knew you meant the incident. <laughs> Sous vide is back to say, FYI, last week's reference to my pillow guy was the first time it was asked. Oh, because he asked the the uh, my pillow guy as the situation improved. Oh, so I apologize. I figured it had to be a repeat. Uh, you know what, Sous vide, you are just one more person that he has he's turned his 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 ire on. Uh, but for the wrong reason. So Shut I, the fuck up. Okay, I'm sorry. Perush says, where's the reference? What's our, wait, what's the, the song? What are you talking about? We have a song for Perush. Oh, right. I don't know. That's up to you. That's your gig. You said okay. so. Okay. Perush, uh, bump, hagafen, Perush, mupakashi in the face. Perush, I forget the name. It's Perush is on fire. How about that? Perush is on fire. Okay. Yeah, yeah right? It's Perush. Perush. The Perush is on fire. All right. <sighs> you were annoyed. You were annoyed. <laughs> Breaking, but then you realize at least it was on topic. Uh, Perush wants to know where the, where's the reference? Where's that smell coming from? The monologue from. Uh, it's from my favorite year. It's yeah. What's that smell? It, it's coming from the monologue. What a stink burger! Which is where the yeah. name of my That's company where the comes name from. The name stink burger came yes. from. Well, he must know that Perouse, right? Uh, I don't no, know. He doesn't know that. Doesn't seem like a great joke setup. So I'm going to think he actually wanted to know. But let me ask you a question: Is Perouse Perouse? Is Perouse on fire? Uh, apparently so. Uh, <laughs> duly, duly noted. <laughs> Sorry, my sense of whimsy has its limits today. <laughs> <laughs> not Tweet Pahara says I really like Andy's new accidental character, not Lenny from Not Mice of Mice and Men. <laughs> Quote Lenny. Andy means George. Don't tell me about the rabbits. Don't tell me Lenny again. Andy means George. I, I just think that th th there's never going to be a way. It's just like me trying to watch Planet of the Apes. I get so obsessed with the, you god damn, 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 you did it again, you damn did it againers. And I can't think of the movie. <laughs> you god damn did it, didn't you, you stupid idiots? I told you it would end up like the this. <laughs> Shucky Ducky, appropriately for this moment, asked, is there an option available for, say, $55 that allows Cameo users to hang up on Andy Kindler? <laughs> Asking for Foster Brooks. <laughs> Shucky Ducky also says, not sure if anyone has thought this, but the Yoshi theme song could be amazing if sung to Falco's classic hit, Amadeus. Uh, 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 Yoshi, I think Yamamoto, we did do Yamamoto, Yamamoto. Yamamoto, Yamamoto. Uh -huh. Yamamoto, Yamamoto, Yamamoto. Yoshi Yamamoto. He's a Yoshimoto. Yoshimito. You okay? No. What is that? A cat? Is that a character who's hurt? It's, fr just it's frustrated Jew. 
<laughs> and things seem to not be going my way. Jason Presley says this Christmas Foster Brooks covers the classics. Uh, Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy, Blue Moon, Mr. Baseman, Blue Christmas, Silver Bells, and many more. Uh, apparently Jason doesn't understand that I do many characters, and I wouldn't <laughs> necessarily sully the Christmas catalog of American Songbook with the drunken character. So perhaps if he'd like to hear my solemn Christian character, we have something I'd to like talk to hear about. That. All right, well. We're well into it. <laughs> the boogie woogie bugle boy of Company B. Is it true that the latter Foster Brooks shows just was his character? No, not his character, him as himself, coming out and sitting in a big easy chair and fielding questions. Yes, I, I think the classic presentation is worthy <laughs> of a man of my stature. I think uh, Carol O'Connor did a little bit of that sometimes. When he would talk as himself, he would make sure to know that he didn't talk that way. Yeah, he took a little bit of... Uh, he, he went he went a little enunciating. Yes, he with, went a little bit intellectual with it. Yeah. Well. Hmm. I'm Carol O'Connor. Hello. Archie Burr. Burr. Archie Burr. Greg Kelly says, didn't watch the recent debate, but the chatter on social media is that James Mason did an excellent job as the moderator. How did he prepare for such an august These people occasion? should be ashamed. should be ashamed of themselves. Well, I'll be honest with you. It really had very little to do with me. It was all about the mute button. Once I knew the mute button was in place, there was very little to fear. There's a, a gas bag can't overcome electronics. You know what? He just makes you feel better. We can't help it. Now I know why the requests are coming in hot and heavy. I believe I bring a, a, a slightly British ray of sunshine, which is a rare deal in itself. You class the show up, I think. Well, I class everything up, really. <laughs> I class Thunderbird wine up, for God's sakes. You've kept James Mason alive for us, Josh. He's a good man, that J. Elvis Weinstein. <laughs> It's the first time I've heard someone's character do a tribute to them. <laughs> He's truly one of my favorite uh, wits. <laughs> In Russia, impression government does you doing the impression. Yes, indeed. I say we move on. How about it? Please, have you seen Bobby recently? Let me ask my former compatriot, Dr. Joseph Mengele. Dr. Joseph Mengele, have you seen one, any of your young Hitler boys, particularly the one with other dogs lately? What was his name again? Bobby. Right, yes. <laughs> that, could be, that could be the greatest movie ever made because I can't get it out of my head. <laughs> Bobby. Bobby. We're shutting down Didn't the he have crazy eyes? Sh who Does who have crazy eyes? Bobby has some kind of crazy eyes. Well, right? if you think Hitler eyes are crazy, I suppose it's subjective, isn't it? <laughs> I went at, to a Halloween party once as Hitler's eyes. Really? Were you in a jar? <laughs> Why was I in a jar? Because you were playing Hitler's eyes. They saved Hitler's eyes. They did not. No, but there was a movie called They Saved Hitler's Brain. You <laughs> Oh, don't get mad at me. I'm one of the your few the few people who've been I'm tired uh, trying of, to get you back. I'm <laughs> tired of having to patronize you. Step up Join your the game or move on. <laughs> Annotated MST says the book of Genesis says that Isaac died at the age of 180. Does, that's your fun fact for the day. Does Andy think he'll make it that long? Love you guys. Well, i just like to be reminded of my death. Either way, it's good. No, but I'd like to make it... I don't care when I die, really. Yes, I do. I think I want to make it to the mid-90s. Yeah. Well, you're pretty much stuck in the mid-90s now. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> How's that Raymond going? 
Yeah, uh, oh, it's canceled. Oh, the mid nineties suck. <laughs> Stephen Elton Yates says, uh, "Belated congrats on another SOTI speech." Any opinions on the state, the MTV comedy series? How about Human Giant? Stay well and stay safe. I kind of liked it. I kind of liked Human Giant when they came out. They made me laugh. And I didn't watch much of the state, so I don't really know much of their stuff. I never I never watched either, really. But Human Giant was very funny. It was with Aziz, and, and uh, it was good. Yeah. You know, you know, for I some, liked it better. For somebody who's supposedly comedy folk like me, mm-hmm. I, I have uh, shockingly little comedy curiosity. I, I think that's somewhat age... Well, I mean, you're way younger than me, but you might be at the age where you, you're not going to go through the discovery of Monty Python or something like that. All right. You, you've you've not that you made all your discoveries, but you've, you know. Yeah. You have a lot under your belt. Yeah. Time to put myself out to intellectual pasture. <laughs> uh, Jordy wants to know, realizing that your expertise lies in prescription drug jingles, does the Pepto song get your toe tapping? If so, would you team up and each sing a part to soothe our tummy aches? I won't because I find that song uh, insulting. Right. Upset stomach, diarrhea, ba 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 I'm just not a fan, but you can, I, I'll hum while you do it. No, I think you just did enough. Upset, d- Pepto, Bismol, d- no, uh, something. It lists all the things. Uh, Diarrhea. Diarrhea. It's great. Yep. Hey, Andy. Mm Mm-hmm. Diarrhea. What? Diarrhea. Diarrhea what? Diarrhea. Am I supposed to be... Is this a... um, Is it knock-knock? It's just... No, I'm just saying it. Diarrhea. Yeah. (laughs) You you start and you get like me. Yeah. (laughs) Aimless bits. (laughs) <laughs> that do nothing but just arrest the momentum. Right. Diarrhea. M. Ledsom <laughs> says, congratulations, guys, on meeting the Darts Max show. What does that mean? Oh, it's the 180, because that's what the most you can make. You can score in darts. Oh. I'm about to start teaching voice acting for animation, radio plays, etc. Any advice for budding voice actors? Yeah, yeah, you do it. If you try to do a voice like this that says, yeah, yeah. Or you could do, do a voice that features an accent. I am from Hungary. <laughs> I'm from Hungary. And then the other thing you want to do is send gift baskets to all the casting people. Solid. That all was so so- cynical, all, right? all solid. <laughs> I never realized how uh, how Hungarian doesn't have much to it. <laughs> I know I'm from Hungary. Oh, I'm, it's very strange that you would say that. So I'm from Hungary. A lot of people put a little too much paprika on their Hungarian. Oh, do you want me to say it as if I was speaking Hungarian? Paprika, paprika. <laughs> oh, here's another word from my language: goulash. What's happening to you today? Do you have goulash? I do. My Middle Eastern voices are suspect. Yeah. Well, that's profiling, making Middle Eastern people suspects. Have you turned into my grandpa? No, that's faster than your grandpa ever fucking was. He wasn't a... Your grandpa just recycled shit. I come up with new stuff. (laughs) All right, don't get upset. Everything's cool. Fash says November is sweeps month. What surprises do you have in store for us? Uh, jo- all of November, Josh is going to be broadcasting in the buff. <laughs> in his birthday suit. Which is really... We a have team. no surprises. We have no surprises planned. All right. All right, you go ahead. No, you already... Uh, you explored both the fanciful <laughs> and the shutdown. I covered all my bases that don't let anybody else in. Get a word in. <laughs> Wookie, or rather Wookie Talkie, says, uh, what's your favorite classic monster movie from Universal Studios? 
And also, which one would work best if at the end they yelled, you really goddamn did it! God! <laughs> I think it would be, I think the creature, no, I'm trying to think of the best goddamn did. Um, I don't really have, I guess, the first Frankenstein and Dracula, but I, I don't have a strong feeling about those kind of movies. Um, I like, uh, I like Phantom of the Opera, uh, cause he fucks up an opera. Wow. Is it kind of scary too? Uh, it depends how much you like opera. <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end, he most certainly could really yell, you god damn did it, you ruined the opera. God damn you, Phantom of the Opera. God damn you to hell, you stupid monkeys. Why did I ever get friendly with monkeys? I knew that would be the end of me. Ah! Ah! <laughs> I hate you, remnants of the Statue of Liberty. I hate you. We are really, we are really giving 70% this week. This is the, wor we this is really the worst <laughs> moments of my life. <laughs> I goddamn did it. That's what happened. I did <laughs> damn do it. I ruined the show for good. God damn it. It might finally be broken. I'm not sure we could. You finally a stupid show <laughs> as represented by the Statue of Liberty for some reason. <laughs> uh, this is fun. <laughs> um, Commiss G says when you were doing stand up which is an abstract concept in and of itself right now. How does it make you feel when only one person in the audience laughs at a joke, but laughs really hard? Are you happy that someone got it or disappointed that it was only one person? If one person laughs hard, I'm always happy. Yeah, I think any comic. Because that's something. Yes, you know? it's enough. It is enough. Well, it's a thing happening. Exactly. Everyone real. Everyone in the room notices that only one person is laughing. So therefore, that in and of itself is funny. But ten people laughing is a disaster. Yes. Well, in Andy's case, that's half the audience, and maybe not. But... Oh, please don't go <laughs> so heavy on me. <laughs> if I got one, I'd call it a mitzvah. Richard Cole. Since I received a notice today that my name has been drawn as potential juror when jury trials begin again in 2021. Have you ever served on a jury? Have I ever served on a jury, people? Oh, well, you've, you've, been, uh, you've been on, we've, as we've talked about, you've been on them more than me. Yes. Richard? Yeah, absolutely. More than anybody I know, I think. Richard, uh, you need to uh, go get my album. You don't have to buy the whole thing. But look for the jury chunk, and I will walk. I'm ex you, I will walk you I'm ex through my extensive jury service in that very bit. But I'm very excited because I am supposed to go. I move mine till November thirtieth, so it sounds like I can move it to next year pretty easily. Uh, not if you've already moved it. I've moved it twice already. Yeah, now you're done. No, but it's COVIDy. It's very COVIDy. Well, then it would might, you go to? A, then I, it might just come and go. Through. <laughs> That's what happened to Allison a couple months ago. What happened? She got jury service. She called because she had pushed hers off to to the summer because of teaching. Right. And uh, she just called in every day, and they never called her. Oh, that's the best. That is the best. But do you know what's so bad? That feeling right before you hear whether you're going to go in or not. Because I used to really get my hopes so much up on not going. Yeah. That when they said where to report, and it's always Disney Hall, and it's always horrible. All right. Well, Andy, I suggest you listen to my bit, the jury chunk, to, <laughs> to find out why I don't feel it's bad for you at all. <laughs> You're laser focused. You're laser focused on getting interest in that bit going again. That's right. <laughs> Seth Dick the Third says, um, I was just watching TCM and there was a topless Lori Partridge being ravished by the great Amer greatest American hero. Mama Dick the Third says that would never happen when Mr. Osborne was running things. She blames that young whippersnapper Ben Mankowitz. <laughs> 
Wow. You may have to talk to, we may have to talk to Ben about his, I don't know what that movie is, but I want to see whatever that was. Susan Day in the, and what's happening to her in the full frontal howdy. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm too old for that kind of thing. I don't know. I've never watched a sex tape. No, you do it on just through the laptop. I don't. I don't get that joke. If you don't explain that joke to me, I'll never get it. Okay, I'm okay with that. Okay, good. Uh, Sue Vide says uh, Walter Brennan came up on last week's show. Do either of you do a Walter Brennan impression? Oh, I do. Well, yeah, 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 That's it. What? Let's hear yours. No, it's covered now. Oh, my God. Talk about someone who's taking it personally. I'm not. I don't have a Walter Brennan. <laughs> so, no, I was talking I was talking about somebody else who was taking it personally. No, I wasn't. I really was. Wait, wait. I almost had it, right? You well, did. <laughs> Walter Brennan. <laughs> <laughs> we both have to say the person's name. <laughs> ah, Jimmy Storch. The gold went back to the mountain. <laughs> Yo, yo, yo. Yoshi's sending me to the DM. Petunia. Petunias. Sorry. That's all right. Uh, Yoshi's sending me to the DMs because his is too long for a regular person's tweet. <laughs> is this a, a fight with sous vide? No, this is a separate issue. Is uh, it an issue between you and him when uh, you're upside down? Uh, no, no. Let me read it, and then you can assess it. Everyone talks about assassinating baby Hitler because if you do it when he becomes chancellor, he ends up being an inspirational story. Sure, he hated the Jews and the Roma and the Czechs for some weird reason, but it's not like he acted on it. From homeless veteran in his 30s to best-selling author and the highest office in Germany. Who knows what Dolph could have done if it were not for that strangely dressed man from the future. He's not, uh, That could not be in a tweet. No, it couldn't. And, and the moral of the story is kill Hitler as a baby. Yes, I'd kill Hitler as a wait, if any Anything, to, if you had it any time in his life, I would have killed him. I don't think you'd have the guts, Kindler. You're right. I'm scared of Hitler. <laughs> would you be scared of Hitler or would you be scared of, uh, I mean, if you met Hitler, say he's, you know, 23. <laughs> doesn't have any henchmen is my right. point, is my point. But you know he's Hitler. <laughs> would you be physically scared of him? Well, it depends on which part of my... If it's the old Andy Kindler, I was scared of everybody. The new Andy Kindler says he's not scared. Yeah. I don't... You know, personally, Hitler seemed like a joke to me. Like, he seemed like Trump in a way. Yeah. So I don't know if I'd be scared while I was with him. Right. Tony Soprano, I'd be scared while I was with him. Right. And James Gandolfini. But Hitler... What's that? And James Gandolfini. <laughs> yeah. But maybe I would work it out with Hitler. You ever think of that? No, but it's possible. We bury the hatchet? <laughs> yeah. He might bury the hatchet in your fucking head. Oh, bop, bop, bop. Sorry for the eruption of sound. That's all right. Well, I think we're out of questions, Andy. <laughs> I did it again. I did it again. What? I started to wind up. Do you know why you can't hang up on somebody? You can't hang up on somebody if you're going to do any kind of wind up. Yeah. Why don't you say the very? Do you want me to say the the plugs this week? I'm yeah. happy to do yeah, it. Yeah, I would like for you for you to, folks. If you'd like to do.